grains and rice, um, when you cook them, they are filled with water. Right. But anyway, that things dehydrate the body. Right? Yes. According to one expert, the water in our perfect foods is up to five to ten times, five, he said five to ten times more easily assimilated by the body than the water we drink. Okay? Why? What's the difference? One guy said to me, water's water, you're full of crap. It doesn't make any difference. Well, the difference is the structure. See, H2O is water. It's a water molecule. Anyone, can anyone please show me a water molecule? You can't do that. You can't do that. That's not a water molecule. That's a whole bunch of water molecules clustered together. You can't show me one because water doesn't exist until you've got a minimum of five clusters, five molecules clustered together. Okay? But the water we're drinking, and this, this is water right from the ground, right? Perfect spring water. You're still looking at probably 25 to 35 molecules clustered together. The water in your plant foods is five, six molecules. It's a lot easier for the body to break those clusters down and get to the water. Okay, it's much easier. So when you take a plant, take a plant part, like a grain of rice is not the plant, it's part of the plant, and you allow it to become completely dry, and then you soak it in water, it's not the same, it's not the same water. I mean, again, if you soak a raisin, does it become a grape? Never the same thing. It's always dehydrated. It'd be like eating the raisin and drinking a little bit of water. It's not going to hydrate you. Okay? Because the lack of that cellular water in the food is taking much more water from your body than you're able to get by what you're drinking. You can actually look at some numbers if you want to. Okay? I mean, I'll, I'll give you, and again, I, the, we're going to make up some numbers, but you're going to get the point. Okay? So let's say, for instance, um, I think we agreed that two, two kilos of watermelon is a reasonable amount. Is that how much water you melon you deep, Brian? Two kilos? Say again? It's less. It's, it's actually uh, two kilos is 4.4 .4 pounds of watermelon flesh. What do you think? Is that about right for you? Yeah. It might be more, but let's just say it's two. Some people, I had one guy responded on a video to say, I, I eat at least three kilos at a time of the actual melon. Okay, let's say it's two kilos. I, that sounds like a lot to people who aren't eating this way, because that's, that's a lot of food. Remember, it's 92% water, okay? It's not a high calorie food. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's not dense in any way except with water, and that water passes through your system. So if you're eating, let's say, first of all, that we're living in the jungle eating only fruit and leaves. Everything we're eating is high water content. Let's say it's all 90% water. We're going to use watermelon as an example. It's actually a little bit higher. But we're going to call it 90% as the example. Let's say that's the average. All right? And we're eating three times a day, if you like. That's what most people do, at least. Three times a day, two kilos each time. How much water are we getting each time we eat? Anyone? If you know the metric system, it's actually pretty easy because a kilo of water is a liter of water. Okay, we're getting 90% that much. That means with each meal we're getting 1.8 liters. Okay, or 5.4 liters per day of water in our food. In our food. Okay? Now let's say that we're not, we, you know, we get relocated. We're living in New York City. We can't get access to fruit. All we have are corn chips. Whatever. Dried food. Okay, and, and for the sake of discussion, just to keep the numbers simple, this is not true, but for the sake of discussion, we're going to say it's completely dry. It's not completely dry. Even the corn chips are 1.5% water. Okay, I, I think it's, it's a small enough amount of water. It doesn't really affect the conversation very much. Okay, it could be crackers. It could be probably you know, bread is not going to be too much higher. But let's say it's zero. So we eat three meals a day of food that's dry. How, how low are we on water compared to where we were when we were eating watermelon, another fruit? Is it 5.4 liters? Is it the 5.4 liters we didn't get? That's what we didn't get, right? What do you think? Is that how low we are? Yeah? I, I don't think so. 
Remember, when we ate the corn chips, they came out of the body wet. So if we're eating food that's 0% water, which may not be possible, but if we could do that, in order to process that food through the body, remember our stool is going to be roughly 75% water. So if we eat, let's say we only eat two kilos of food the whole day. It's dried food because it's not high in water. It's going to be much lighter, right? We're eating two kilos of food in order to, to eliminate the waste from that. And we're not eliminating everything we're eating because some of it's absorbed by the body. But let's say it's going to take us at least, I don't know, what do you think? How much water would it take to move that through the system? Let's say out of the two kilos we eat, we're eliminating only half a kilo. Does that sound reasonable? We're eliminating half a kilo. My guess is it might be more than that. But let's say it's half a kilo. Our stool is going to be 75% water. The food had no water. That means we're going to eliminate one and a half kilos of water. That's one and a half liters of water. So if we're eating dry food, we're not 5.4 liters short. We are 6.9 liters short. Everyone with me? 5.4 plus the one and a half it took to move the stuff through the body. Are you with me so far? Okay. 6.9. Now, the water in our food is perfect water. Let's say this scientist is right, and it takes, he, I'm sorry, he said 10 to 20 times more water, more, more absorbable, the water in the food. Let's say it's only 10. Let's say it's 10 times. In order to make up for the 6.9 liters of water we're down, because it was the water from food and the water from our body, what do we, how much do we have to drink to make that up? We would have to drink 69 liters of water to get the 6.9 we need. Can you drink 69 liters of water in a day? Well, your kidneys, two healthy kidneys, can process one liter per hour. So if you never slept, you could get 24 liters in a day. You couldn't get 69. Let, let's say those numbers are absurd. It's, it's only 5%. Okay, it's not 10 times, excuse me, 5 times harder, not 10 times. Which means we'd only need, what, 39 and a half liters per day. Can we get that? No. Okay. In fact, I think most people would find they'd have a hard time drinking the 7, you know, 6.9 liters per day on top of their meals if they were trying to do anything with their life. That would be difficult to do. And that's if it was no harder to get that water in than it is the water in our food. It was exactly the same. You could just drink the seven, the seven liters you're missing, you'd be fine. But that's not the case. Okay? This is why people are dehydrated. I mean, how many people out there do you think are drinking 6.9 liters a day? Now, again, the numbers may not be exactly right. We, we fudged them a little bit. The food doesn't have no water, it has some, but not much. So the effect is a little less. Here's what I've seen. No one's hydrated unless they're do they've done two things. One, gotten their body clean, gotten all the old garbage out of their body, and secondly, continued to eat an optimal diet with water when necessary. No one's going to get enough water eating juicy fruit, and no one who hasn't fasted is ever going to be able to make this happen. So no, you're not going to get hydrated because you've got this mass of old material sitting in your body soaking stuff up, soaking up water. Does this make sense to you? Yeah. I mean, some people think it's complete nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. But they, they haven't been here. They haven't seen what you guys have seen. They haven't seen how much water you guys are needing to drink now as the stuff is soaking up water. How many of you experienced gas at least once or twice in the time you've been here? Okay, why do you think that's happening? I mean, we understand if you, know, if you eat beans, you're going to have gas because you're not digesting the beans very well, but you're not eating anything. So why is this happening now? Old materials breaking down. That means old materials in there, okay? And it's not coming out if you don't drink enough water. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're interested in more information about fasting in general, we've got a playlist there. If you're interested in fasting for specific conditions, you can check out that list. If you want to hear what people experience was in their own words, we've got a group there and then we've got another one which is all about optimal diet and how to maximize your health.